What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on to the next concept, we're now going to talk about job order costing. And you're going to see a lot of problems in your class come up on this concept. We're going to be doing problems as well. But before doing that, I want to give you a quick higher level overview of how this works. And the way this works, very similar to what we've been doing, we're going to be running into those three product costs, right? Direct material, direct labor, manufacturing overhead. And what I want to do to start off here is actually bring back the example that I went through in the applied overhead overview video. So where we talked about the car manufacturer, and then we had two types of cars, right? We had car one, car two, right? Like a lower end car, higher end car. And so the direct material, direct labor, and the manufacturing overhead was different for each product. And then this manufacturing overhead, if you remember, it was applied right, by a certain cost driver. Now, instead of looking at these three product costs um, per product, you can also look at them per job. So on a per job basis. And that's what job order costing is. So the way I like to think of different jobs that are listed is different clients that a firm may have. So let's say that you have a firm, you're manufacturing a certain product, and then different clients are going to want different quantities of your product or different quantities of different kinds of products that you have. And so each job is going to be unique in terms of its product costs. Now, another thing that I want to bring back to better explain this concept is a portion of that manufacturing flow chart, if you remember. So the portion that I want to look at is when we had the work in process at the beginning. Remember, work in process is like unfinished goods that are still in the factory. So we're going to have work in process at the beginning of a period. And then there's going to be more direct materials used, more direct labor used, more manufacturing overhead used right, the product costs. And then in the factory, there's going to be some goods that are finished. So those are the cost of goods manufactured. So those are going to go out to finish goods, right? There was like an arrow here. But again, I'm only looking at this equation over here. So uh, beginning unfinished goods, some more work is done, some end up being finished, and then you're left with a work in process at the end balance. Right, more unfinished goods that get carried over to the next period over here. And so this here looks at the work in process account from the firm as a whole, but you can also look at this from a per job basis, from a per job perspective. And so there's something called a job order cost sheet and a job order cost sheet looks at this portion of that manufacturing flow. So what happens is uh, we got job one, job two. Let's just pretend there's two jobs. We're going to be dealing with questions where there's going to be a bunch. And so what's going to happen is for each of these jobs, there's going to be some kind of work in process at the beginning of the period. So let's say we're looking at the month of May. So the beginning of May is May 1st. Now, a lot of times you won't see this um, as work in process. You'll just see this as balance, right? But it's the same thing. It's the work in process balance at the beginning of the period for that specific job. And if you're starting on the job in that month, then it's going to be zero. But if you've already been working on the job in previous months, then there's going to be some kind of balance here. And so what's going to happen is during the month of May, you're going to have more direct materials used on the job, more direct labor, and then you're going to be applying manufacturing overhead. Remember this manufacturing overhead, it's applied. And then at the end of the period, we do a reconciliation. And then what happens is you total up these and you get some kind of balance over here. And that's going to be at the end of the period. So let's say like May 31st. 
Now, what's different when you're looking at this flow over here on a per job basis versus a firm as a whole, the firm as a whole, notice that all of the jobs are gonna be there in this equation over here and all of the products that they're making. We're looking at the total amount in the factories or in all of the factories for the firm. And so you're gonna have some unfinished goods, they're gonna get worked on, and then a portion of those goods are gonna get finished. And cost of goods manufactured, that's gonna flow into finished goods. And then you're gonna have some more unfinished goods that get carried over to the next period. Well, with a job, when you're looking at this from a per job perspective, usually we don't transfer out a portion of a job. So it's either, it's like an all or none kind of deal. So what happens with this balance over here is one of two things. You can't transfer out into finished goods a portion of this balance. So either the job is unfinished, and if the job is unfinished, then this entire balance becomes the work in process at the end for that specific job. Remember, we're looking at each job specifically here. So this is like an unfinished job. Or the job is finished. And if the job is finished, then this entire balance uh, goes to finished goods. Right? So not a portion of it, the entire thing. And then when it goes to finished goods, what happens then is that the work in process at the end for that specific job is going to be zero. Right? So, so thought I would mention that. It's not like a, a big deal, but um, just know that when you're looking at the firm as a whole, a portion of it, a portion of the unfinished goods get finished, they get transferred out. While you're looking, if you're looking at this on a per job perspective, you can't transfer a portion of the job. So either this balance over here, the job is still unfinished, then this whole balance becomes the work in process for the end of that specific job, which becomes the work in process for the beginning of the next period. Or if that job is finished, then that job goes to finished goods and the work in process for a specific job at the end ends up being zero, right? So that's the difference when you're looking at uh, job order costing versus the firm as a whole. That's the biggest difference that's happening in this flow here. You can't transfer out a portion of a job. Right, so what's happening is, just in general, you're gonna have a bunch of job orders. You got job order. Job order. And then what happens is at some point they get completed. And then the rest is exactly the same that we've been dealing with before. They go into finished goods. And then once sold, they go into cost of goods sold on the income statement. Right, so that's basically how job order costing works. And this over here, this statement per job, it's called a job order cost sheet. But again, we're gonna get into more specifics when we do examples working with actual numbers.